In this video, we're going to talk about a very important algebraic structure called a ring. So, rings. We'll start by stating the definition of a ring. So, definition. So, a ring is a set. So, a ring is a set. R together with two binary operations. So together with two binary operations. Uh, called addition and multiplication. So called addition. And so for addition we'll just use the regular plus sign. So um, say given an element a and b in R, well, we're going to denote the sum by a plus b and multiplication. And for multiplication, again given two elements a and b, We'll denote the product as a dot b. Sometimes uh, I'll omit uh, the dot, so it's kind of okay to omit that. The plus sign, though, that, that's not okay. Typically, that's always used. So ring is a set R together with two binary operations uh, called addition and multiplication, such that the following uh, will hold. So the first condition in the definition of a ring is that your set R under addition, so R together with addition is an abelian group. So R under addition is an abelian group. Abelian group. So what does that mean? Well that means that it has associativity, there is the existence of an identity, and um, there is the existence of inverses. Uh, all of this under, under addition. Let me go ahead and write those conditions down as a refresher. So one, what does this mean? This means we have associativity. Of addition, right? So this would mean that if you have A plus B, and then you add it to C, this is the same as then taking A and adding it to B plus C. And this is true for all A, B, C in our set R. So addition is associative to. Um, two is the existence of an identity element. So let me write that down. So existence of, and let me say an additive identity, just to clarify that we're talking about addition here. So we typically use uh, the symbol zero to denote the additive identity. So there exists an element, and if we really want to be uh, pedantic, we can use a subscript for R. So there exists zero sub R in R set R, such that if you take A plus zero R, you get A. Likewise, if you take zero R plus A, you get A. And this is true for all little a in our set R. So this is the existence of an additive identity. And the third condition is the existence of inverses. So existence of inverses. So this means that given any element little a in R, we can find the inverse of A. So there exists an element denoted by negative A in R, such that when you take A and you add it to negative A, you get the additive identity. And then when you take negative A and you add it to A, again, you get the additive identity element. So these are the three conditions that make up uh, an abelian group. So that's the first condition 
in the definition of a ring. The second condition in the definition of a ring is that multiplication is associative. So for all A, B, C, and R, for all A, B, C, and R, uh, if you take A times B, C, that's the same thing as saying A, B times C. So we have associativity of multiplication. Associativity of multiplication. And the very last condition in the definition of a ring is the super powerful distributive laws. Let me write that down, distributive laws. Distributive laws. This one was associativity of multiplication, but I didn't, I didn't write it. I'll, I'll write it. This is associativity of mult. Let's put mult, multiplication. The distributive laws. Uh, basically, uh, we have distribution on the left and on the right. So if you have A times B plus C, that's equal to AB plus AC. And if you have, uh, say, A plus B times C, that would be equal to AC plus BC. And this has to be true for all little A, B, C, and R set R. So recap, what is a ring? Um, a ring is a set with two binary operations, right? Addition and multiplication. And, and uh, what, what do you have? There's three conditions. Uh, R is an abelian group. Uh, multiplication is associative, and the distributive laws hold. The distributive laws connect the two operations, right? This is where the connection happens, right? So addition and multiplication are connected by these distributive laws. That's what puts them together, right? Let's us use both. So that's the definition of a ring. Let's go ahead and look at some um, examples of rings. So you see uh, some actual examples. Ring theory is really, really rich. It's a lot of really cool stuff. So let's say that R here is the set of integers. That's going to be our set. And then we're going to look at uh, the ring, which we can denote it by an ordered triple, as the set of integers under addition and multiplication. So this would be, this would be, a, ring. This would be a ring. Oh, I forgot to mention something kind of key here. Um, so uh, the multiplication does not have to be uh, uh, commutative, right? So uh, if if dot is commutative, so if the multiplication is commutative, uh, we have a commutative ring. We have a it's called a commutative ring. Commutative commutative ring. There's a whole there's a whole field of study on commutative rings. There's entire books on on commutative ring theory. Uh, um, so if the multiplication is commutative, we have a commutative ring. Also if if we have a multiplicative identity, forgot to mention this. If we have a multiplicative identity, uh, we have what's called a it's called a ring with identity. A ring with identity. So if we do have a multiplicative identity, we say we have a ring with identity. And the notation for this, the notation for this is a 1. And if you want to be pedantic, you can put a little subscript here, 1 sub r. Boom, there it is. It's also called a ring with 1 or a ring with unity, depending on the author and what you're reading. So, so rings aren't required to be commutative, and they are not required to have uh, identity. Right? Some people require those things. We will not. So back to this example um, here. This is a ring. Uh, and it's uh, basically, this is a group under addition. Right? Z plus is a group. This is an abelian group. That's the first condition. That's pretty easy to see. Okay. Um, what else? Multiplication is associative. Sure. Yeah. Multiplication of integers is associative. So the second condition uh, is pretty easy. So this is associative. So this is one. This is two. And the distributive laws hold, right? If you think about the distributive laws with integers, should be no problem. So distributive laws. Let's put dist laws. Piece of cake. So this this is a ring. Uh, it's pretty easy to see that it would it will be a ring. Um, likewise, likewise you can look at these rings. If you take the set of rational numbers under addition and multiplication, that's a ring. If you take the set of real numbers under addition and multiplication, that's a ring. 
By the way, addition and multiplication, we mean regular addition and multiplication. If you take a set of complex numbers under addition and multiplication, that's also a ring. Let's keep going. Let's do lots of examples. Let's try to do as many examples uh, as we can. Um, so say you fix a natural number. So remember, by the natural numbers, uh, we start at 1. Right? We start at 1 with our natural numbers. And we're going to set r to be equal to m sub n by n of c, where c is the complex numbers. And we're going to let this be uh, all n by n complex matrices complex matrices. By a complex matrix, we mean a matrix whose entries are complex numbers. So R is actually a ring, right? So if we do, um, if plus is just matrix addition, and times is uh, just regular matrix multiplication, then R, together with addition and multiplication, is a ring. Is a ring. You might say, oh, they don't have to be invertible matrices? Well, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter because um, we're only saying that R under addition, this is a group, right? So given a matrix A, uh, its inverse is negative A. So like given A and R, the inverse would be negative A, right? And the identity would be the zero matrix. This would be the identity for the group. So it certainly is a group under addition, right? There's no, there's no problems uh, here. Uh, under multiplication, though, it doesn't have to be a group, right? We would, we would have to have some other requirements if we wanted that, mainly that the matrices be invertible. OK, um, so that takes care of that one. That's the matrix ring. Let's see, what else, what else? Oh, uh, this is an interesting one. So if we take R to be Z sub M, here M is a natural number. And um, here, um, what is Z sub M? Z sub M is going to contain the elements 0, 1, 2, all the way to M minus 1. You guessed it. This is very similar to the additive group of integers modulo N, right? except it's M here. And now we're going to have two operations. So circle plus, this will be addition modulo n, or m rather, addition modulo m. And then now we get to have circle dot. <laughs> so circle dot uh, will be multiplication modulo m. So multiplication, multiplication modulo m. And then so in this case, z sub m together with addition modulo m and multiplication modulo m is a ring. So these guys here together form a group, right, this under, under the addition. So like, let's say we had, um, let's look at a simple example. Say we had, let's look at a concrete example. Say we had z sub 6, okay, z sub 6, just making this up. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right, that would be all the remainders that you get when you divide a number by 6, right? So 0 through 5. So if you had like, um, let's see, if you had 2 times 3. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 goes into 6 one time, the remainder is 0. So 2 times 3 is equal to 0. Yet none of these elements are 0. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, we'll explore that in another video. But so you have two non-zero elements whose product is 0. It's kind of, kind of, kind of neat. Um, if you do 4 circle plus 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, uh, so 6 goes into 8 um, um, one time, so the remainder is 2, right? So just some simple examples of addition and multiplication in z sub 6, in z sub 6. Um, how about this one? This is an interesting ring. So r equals 17z. So this would be all the multiples of 17. So, so it would be 17n such that n is an integer. And then so here plus is just regular addition. And then times is just uh, regular uh, multiplication. So multiplication. Let's put mult. Uh, this is a ring, right? No problem here. But this ring does not have a multiplicative identity. So this is a ring without 1. Right? It doesn't have uh, a multiplicative identity. It has an additive identity. The additive, Id additive identity is 0, uh, but there is no uh, multiplicative identity. Let's look at another example. The video is getting kind of long, but you know what? 
doesn't matter. Um, if you're still watching this, awesome. <laughs> so R is equal to uh, the set containing just zero, right? This is called the zero ring. The zero ring. It's also called the trivial ring. Trivial ring. A lot of knowledge uh, in this video. So trivial ring. Uh, and it's zero is the only element. Um, this this is a ring under just addition and multiplication, whatever they may be. So just you can just call it addition and call it multiplication. In this ring, uh, zero is equal to one. Pretty freaky. So zero is equal to one in this ring. It's called a trivial ring. A lot of times in a lot of theorems, I'll say if you know if R is any ring except the trivial ring, because the trivial ring is kind of like the oddball, oddball case. Um, I think that's good. Let's just go back up and just recap what we've done. So R is a ring uh, if it's a set with two binary operations called addition and multiplication, right? such that R is an abelian group under addition. Uh, we have associativity of multiplication and the distributive laws. Those are the laws that connect uh, multiplication and addition. If the multiplication is commutative, we have what's called a commutative ring. If we have a multiplicative identity, we have what's called a ring with identity or a ring with one or a ring with unity. Then we had some examples of rings. If you take the set of integers, rational numbers, real numbers, or complex numbers under regular addition and multiplication, all of these are rings, right? The set of complex, oh, all of these are rings with one, right? The, all of these have a ring with one. Uh, the set of complex matrices, that's a ring under regular addition and multiplication. Um, we took the additive group of integers modulo m, and we added multiplication modulo m, and we created a ring. So you have a ring uh, that's a little bit different. And this ring is kind of special because you can have two non-zero elements multiplying to zero, kind of cool. Um, here we saw a ring without one, uh, so all the multiples of 17. Uh, it's certainly a commutative ring, uh, but it doesn't have uh, one. And then here we saw the trivial ring. That probably should have been the first example of the trivial ring. I hope this video has made sense. In the videos that follow, uh, I'm thinking uh, we'll talk about like specific things about rings and just go through all of the ring theory. That'd be really, really cool. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching.